Now, I'm going to be honest here. I'm recording this video on the night of Saturday, February 25th. It's snowing outside. It's 10.13 p.m. And the Vancouver Canucks versus Boston Bruins game ended a few hours ago. We already made a video talking about this trade. The Vancouver Canucks acquired Vitaly Kravtsov. And in that video yesterday, we went over what the plan for Saturday was. I had my own personal hockey game to attend, so I wouldn't have been able to make a post-game video on the Canucks and the Bruins. And... I wasn't able to watch the game, period, because yesterday, and I told you about this as well in the video, but yesterday I had myself a date. And it went really, really well. Get your mind out of the gutter there, I'm not talking about any of that, but just the meeting, the connection, the vibes, I don't think I could have asked for it to be any better. It was very fun. So I wanted to give a big shout out to all of y'all in the comments of the last video that were really supportive and... Just so heartwarming and full of love and understanding that I have my own personal life that I have to kind of commit things to and sometimes it interferes with being able to watch hockey games. Now sure, you could very well debate that this was a game worth missing. Not only did the Canucks lose 3-1, to one, but they got a goalie goal scored against him. We made a video the other day talking about how good, godly, beastly, amazing Linus Allmark has been and then he goes out there and scores a goal. Talk about getting the Vesna locked up in your name there, fam. He already would have been up there in that conversation had he not scored, but now he's scored, which adds an even crazier layer to the super great season that he has been having. But all Vancouver Boston talk aside, I wanted to revisit that Vitaly Kravtsov trade. Because right after it was made, we had ourselves some thoughts shared by Rick Dollywall that kind of go over the story and... What went down between Vancouver and Vitaly Kravtsov before this trade was ultimately made? Rick Dollywall always goes out there and provides some good stuff, and this is no different. He had himself a twit longer tweet made yesterday a few hours after the trade. I'm going to go out there and read this entire thing because Rick does a very good job at just kind of explaining the timeline as to how things went down. Thoughts on Vitaly Kravtsov. The Canucks have been after this 23-year-old forward for over a year. He falls into that age category that GM Patrick Alvin and President Jim Rutherford have been looking for. Players under 25. Now, before we continue, I just wanted to say, if you had told me at the beginning of 2022-2023 that the Vancouver Canucks would end the season off with Atu Ratu and Vitaly Kravtsov in their system, I would have been ecstatic. Like, sure, you could not have foreseen the Canucks doing as poorly as they have been in the 23 season, but there are some things that are more surprising than others. When it comes to this team, though, building the youth and acquiring guys that can actually be helpful NHL players today while also serving some long-term projectability, players in this Ratu, Kraftsov sort of range fit that bill entirely. And I'm all here for it because a lot of these guys are reclamation projects. Atu Ratu isn't really a reclamation project. It's just he gets that status because of where he had gone in the draft. But for Vitaly Kraftsov, mismanaged by New York, now he's in Vancouver, he's going to get an opportunity. Boom. There you go. All it costs is Will Lockwood and a seventh. Here is the update on Rick Dollywall's Twit Longer post. Yesterday, so today for Dollywall because he wrote it yesterday, but yesterday for us, the Canucks finally got Kraftsov after giving up William Lockwood and a seventh. The Canucks and Rangers have been talking about Kraftsov for around four weeks, and the original asking price was a mid-first round pick. Oh, baby, man. Patrick Alvin getting asked for a mid-first round pick? Let's say the Islanders' first round pick, for example, for Vitaly Kraftsov. I get that Kraftsov was a ninth overall guy back in 2018. I really do. And I definitely do think that he was taken there for a reason. He was so good in the KHL playoffs in 2017, 2018. That's why his stock shot up all the way to the moon and he was taken ninth overall. But Vitaly Kraftsov for a mid first. Oh boy, that's a big ask. On Thursday, when Kravtsov was pulled out of the Rangers lineup for trade reasons, the Canucks were not close to landing him. In fact, Kravtsov's agent, Dan Milstein, was told by the Canucks on Thursday and Friday that the price was too high. Sources say the Rangers asked for Niels Hoaglander, and Vancouver said no. Oh my gosh, dude. Thursday and Friday, that's the day before the trade was actually made. Let's assume, worst case scenario, Friday, the Rangers are asking for Niels Hoaglander? That guy who's in the AHL with the Abbotsford Canucks and who's actually looking pretty good. He's looking a lot more confident and he's scoring some crazy shootout goals like he had last night. This guy has been pretty good for the Abbotsford Canucks getting 20 points in 28 games played. Sure, 
You could say, oh, maybe he was rushed into the NHL a little bit too soon. Maybe his play and how he was projected earlier on in his career was a little bit too much for him to handle at the start of his young career. But Niels Hoglander is only 22 years old. There's a lot of time for this guy to kind of go out there and improve. And if the Rangers on Friday were asking for Hoglander in return for Kravtsov and the Canucks were like, no, kind of blows my mind how the next day it ends up being Lockwood in a seventh that gets it done. Everything changed today, Dollywall said. Yesterday for us, today for him when he wrote the article, as the Rangers are trying hard to land Patrick Kane and they lowered the demand on Kravtsov. At this time of year, things change daily, and pressure points change as well. Some good work by Alvin to outweigh the Rangers and other teams, as well to get a player he has coveted for a while. Milstein says that Kraftsov will join the Canucks in Dallas tomorrow. Or today. By the way, did you see that Uber cost? Whatever? Oi, oi, oi. Vitaly Kraftsov getting an Uber from Washington to New York. That's like $800 right there. That's kind of wild, isn't it? But this was kind of the start of how things transformed from what was essentially a huge asking price, Niels Hoglander, a mid-first round pick, all the way to Will Lockwood in a seventh baby, man. Patrick Kane, you could low-key be defined as the savior of Vancouver if this trade ends up working out for the Canucks in the long term. Like, let's say Vitaly Kravtsov becomes that top six sniper that the Rangers fan base thought they would be getting when they selected him ninth overall in 2018. Let's say he gets maybe... One 30-goal season, a boatload of 23, 25, 26 goal seasons, and a boatload of, let's say, 50, 60-point seasons, too. If he becomes a legit player for the Vancouver Canucks, that in which they will need to resign because he is expiring at the end of this season, then you could debate saying, hey, Patrick Kane is kind of the reason this happened. Will Lockwood in a seventh? Are you kidding me? I liked Lockwood a lot. A lot of people did. But, like, it's not like Will Lockwood was the biggest, baddest, game-breaking type of player out there. And Kravtsov's younger, too. This is an absolute win in the short term for Vancouver. And you could go out there and say there's the RFA negotiations that need to go down. But I feel like with the Rangers and their entire situation involving Kravtsov, the debate with that contract wasn't necessarily dollar amount, per se. Oh, Kravtsov is requesting this and the Rangers only want to give him that. It wasn't really that. I think it was more so just in the territory of Kravtsov not wanting to re-sign with the Rangers in general because of how they fumbled his development, because of the lack of opportunity with the Rangers, and because he could probably go somewhere else and just find a better playing situation. You combine this with the fact that the Rangers had a pretty interesting predicament on their hands where they knew this probably was the case. And they didn't want to go out there and say, okay, well, we don't want to lose him out for nothing. We don't want to be able to qualify his rights and not agree on anything. And all of a sudden he's not playing for us and we don't get anything in return. Or he leaves and he goes to UFA status after holding out for long enough. And we don't want to go out there and overpay for the guy to stick around with us because he doesn't want to be here. We know that. So lower the asking price. We'll... Let the Canucks lower theirs. Okay, maybe not Hoaglander. How about Lockwood and a six? Okay, no, not a six. How about a seventh? Eh, here you go. And that's sort of how it feels in my mind, why everything went down the way that it did. This is Patrick Alvin capitalizing on situations outside of Vancouver that are very precarious for certain players and just unfortunate in general. Here's another tweet made by Rick Dollywall. It's replying to a tweet made by Grady. Let's read the Grady tweet first. Was told by people close to the situation that the Rangers wanted Hoglander for Kravtsov, but the Canucks didn't bend. When the price dropped on Kravtsov, Vancouver offered lower value. Same thing reportedly happened with Carolina and Bear. Nice work by Vancouver's management team to wait them out. Rick Dollywall replies saying, This is why on Thursday and Friday, the Canucks thought the price was too high. Obviously, the price dropped the next day. Give Alvian credit for patience and catching New York in a pickle. Talk started with Vancouver and New York four weeks ago. The original asking price was a mid-first rounder. And so, all Canucks versus Boston talk aside, I want you to let me know in the comments all your opinions about this Kraftsoft situation, how the Vancouver Canucks were able to capitalize on a very interesting predicament the Rangers had at their hands with a player that didn't want to be there and that was going to require a contract extension. Now Vancouver has him, but it only costs Will Lockwood and a seventh. Pretty good trade in my opinion. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shrolls 99. And bye.